Um, we have a presentation on 2021 expense deep dive by trustee John Becker. Okay, so first thing I want you to notice is I learned how to do a watermark. I'm uh, very <laughs> proud of myself. Next slide, you've seen this before. So this is the uh, uh, full year 2021 uh, income and expense statement. This is what I use as a, um, uh, the, the, you know, the, the baseline that anything I do in terms of any kind of reporting analysis from the detail has to tie out to this report and, and I make sure that it does. If it doesn't, then I'm asking questions, trying to figure out what happened. So what I'm doing with these various presentations, I'm looking at 2021 because it's, you know, it's a full year of data and I'm gonna start doing 2022 at some point and once I get those numbers, what do they mean? So at least having 2021, knowing what those are, and looking at 2022, I expect our expenses are gonna go up, you know, whose expenses aren't going up. The question is gonna be how much are they going up and why, and uh, making adjustments, uh, or looking at making potential adjustments where we're going to need to. So that uh, number at the very bottom, 69 million for 12, is the number I'm going to look to tie to. So this first graph, and the only, I just have a couple of brief takeaways on this one. I've only got, uh, I think, three of these is um, this is the total, which includes the pass-throughs, which ties out to the 69412000 know, So the pass-throughs is the biggest amount of that. And of those pass-throughs, 23 million of the 29 million, 23 million is the uh, bond anticipation note. We got a t another uh, 4 million in uh, transfers, and the rest of it is special improvement uh, districts and lighting. The other thing... I guess I want to mention on um, this, um, I'll go to the next slide and talk about it there. So on this next slide then, this is what I call real money. So this is $40 million, and this is taking the noise, or at least most of the noise, out of the data. So it takes out all the pass-through data. So, and, and I'm kind of proud of myself with the colors here, red for fire, blue for police, <coughs> and the parks are green, the roads are black, so I try to get creative with some of this stuff. So as you can see, half, of, a, of our total expenses, expenses of real money, you know, $40 million, you know, taking out the pass-throughs, half of it is simply police and fire, and, and they're split just about 50-50. So at the bottom, uh, the, in the gold, those are uh, money we pay out to the schools. So those are TIF payments that we do to make the schools whole. The, uh, going, I'm, I'm going clockwise here. So next to the schools, you get that blue wedge uh, near, near the bottom. At a, uh, it's, uh, that's capital, $4.3 million. And capital, is, that's just kind of a, a category I made up looking at some of the expenses. And this expense chart I use, it's called a uh, expense audit trail. And this expense audit trail, it is every detail, every line item, every invoice of every expenditure. <coughs> and it was 9,000 something, 9,300 line items and some 8,600 invoices. And, and I looked at every one of them. And fortunately, there was nothing on there called other or miscellaneous, but there was a lot of stuff called administrative. So where it made sense to put administrative in some of these, you know, department categories, I did, and, and, and others I did not. So I did look at it real hard. Now, you know, is anybody else going to look at 9,600 line items of data to try to figure this out? No normal person would. I've been called a lot of things, and normal is not one of them. So on the second graph, or I'm sorry, this graph, after capital, so the capital is economic development, is land acquisition, improvements. It also included the firehouse, because I thought about putting the firehouse expenses that we just built on Beechwood into the fire expense, but decided uh, just to leave that under capital because it was a major, major construction item. Also, TIF payments are in capital. And the next wedge, that goldish wedge, is debt, and that's principal and interest that we have on the debt. And what I want to point out, and this, this continues to bother me, what I want to point out is we spend more money on debt, principal and interest on debt, than we spend on roads and parks combined. And you know, the, the amount of debt that we've had has always been concerning to me. We've got interest rates going up. The, the biggest piece of this is that uh, bond anticipation note that I've talked about in the past, that's uh, $23 million. And the problem with that is, is, uh, it, it is an interest rate swap with uh, Royal Bank of Canada, and we... We, in addition to the principal interest, we also include um, true-up payments as part of all of that. When that, when, so our fixed rate on that is 
And what I was told is that once the LIBOR rate, and LIBOR, that's an international benchmark, stands for London Interbank Offered Rate, something like that. So it's an international benchmark, and when that gets up to, when that LIBOR rate gets up to 3.9, uh, then there may be some decisions to make regarding that bond anticipation note. So I'm not sure how worried I need to be about all this, but it does, it does concern me. I'm continuing to watch it. So on the LIBOR rate, and it does track with the Fed funds rate, when I started doing this in March, the, the LIBOR rate was 1.38, in April it was 2.28, in May it was 2.67, and today's rate is 3.37. So LIBOR continues to uh, go up and continues to concern me. Then the next wedge, the black one, uh, as you're getting closer to the top now, is, uh, is roads, 2.4 million. So in that, you, you know, salaries and benefits are part of that, equipment, the, the resurfacing, so you know, your asphalt expense. Um, are also our uh, TID payments, the Claremont County Transportation Improvement District. And, and I tell you, we get, we get that money back <coughs> and a whole lot more. That, that's really a great deal for Union Township. Uh, traffic control expenses, salt, uh, drainage, fuel, also um, liability and property casualty insurance is also part of that. So and then the green wedge parks. Uh, similarly, salaries, benefits, equipment, um, uh, rehabbing the tennis course we did back in 2021, uh, ball fields, shelters, you know, dead tree removal, mowing, pond maintenance, kind of stuff you do in the parks, that's all what's in those numbers. Cemetery, same thing, salaries, benefits, equipment, fuel, the lantern lighting ceremonies in there, uh, supplies, utilities. Uh, the last wedge up there at the top, um, or not the last wedge, but the, the smallest wedge, uh, zoning. Again, salaries, benefits, equipment, legal ads, uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals, zoning boards, all that goes into zoning. So that last one, as you get too close to the top there, uh, other. So the question would be, well, what is an other? And I did an entire graph just breaking out other. So that's the last graph that I have. And so that's uh, $3 million worth. So of that $3 million worth, uh, salaries and benefits is the, is the biggest piece of that. And uh, I think Mr. Campbell and I sat down and were talking about that. I think there's like 10 different people uh, that are in administration. And, you know, what, so what happens in corporate America with these kind of, uh, you know, you can just think of them as overhead expenses. Most of the stuff on this slide is overhead. In corporate America, what they would do is, what companies would do is, and, and what's a procedure called cost accounting. They would take these overhead expenses and allocate them to the various departments and, and divisions and, and look at profitability because profitability is determined by total cost. Well, the total cost of the, you know, the headquarters, keeping the lights on and paying executive salaries, that all gets distributed somehow, some way, down to those various uh, you know, profit center departments. We don't need to do anything like that in government, but I'm just pointing out this is, this is the overhead expense, and it could be allocated out, but it really doesn't make sense to do so. Uh, but also, there are some benefits in here that are not in some of the other departments. Uh, the flexible spending account uh, expenditures is, is also in that. So again, moving down clockwise, you have uh, maintenance. That's um, uh, HVAC, uh, sign removal, sign removal, that's the, uh, the, the uh, commercial signs you see out on, out on the roads everywhere, advertising whatever that people just kind of randomly put up. Uh, we pay somebody to pick those up and, and, and keep the township cleaned up. So that sign removal is in these numbers. Uh, also uh, landscaping and, and repairs. Uh, the next uh, one, that gold area, that's the post office. Uh, that's uh, uh, also a source of revenue. The taxes and fees, then, is the, the, the blue wedge toward the bottom. And so that's audit fees, uh, and uh, it is um, real estate taxes. On, uh, that would be on commercial buildings that we, we rent out, because like on this building, for example, there would not be any taxes. There's a TQL wedge at the bottom, kind of the goldish color, rust color. <coughs> Those are JED payments to TQL per our economic development agreement. Utilities is the, is the black wedge there, 218,000, and uh, that's going to be, you know, the, the, the usual suspects, Dukes and St. Bell, Verizon, also our uh, water and sewer expense. That green wedge, uh, systems, so that was something, again, that's a category I just kind of made up. So systems is uh, just computer expenses. So it's computers, it's networking, it's Wi-Fi, cloud services, security software, and the such. So, so over on the far left, uh, it's kind of a grayish wedge, outreach. Again, I kind of just made that term up, too. So that was uh, outreach. That's stuff I'm calling like concerts, fireworks. Uh, we have a lobbyist. Uh, and by the way, the lobbyist was instrumental in getting us $122,000 for the pickleball courts 
uh, that we're going to be putting in at uh, Klepper Park. Uh, so also um, ch uh, the, the chamber, our newsletter, uh, junk days. So I'm calling all that outreach because it's all for kind of public uh, consumption. The, after that, it's kind of a uh, pinkish wedge. There's uh, legal and CPA fees. Most of that is legal. But that includes like ads, uh, audit costs, that sort of thing. Uh, supplies is the next one up, that bluish wedge, $58,000, just, you know, office, uh, janitorial, sundries, that sort of thing. Uh, and insurance is that smallest wedge, and that is property casualty and uh, liability. <coughs> so, so some of these expenses were allocated to various departments. This is really the overhead expense, most of it really having to do with this building. Now, with that, gentlemen, that was my detailed deep dive on 2021. Are there any questions? Appreciate it. Thank you. John, you put a lot of time into this. You did. A lot of time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I actually you. put more time in the last week's report, but it was just harder to work with. Yeah. <laughs> it was various reports, and I'm trying to pull stuff out of PDF files and categories called other, and that was challenging. Yeah. Using this using this detailed audit report was relatively easy because everything was, not everything, a lot of stuff was kind of pre-organized. So this is police, this is fire. It was easy to pick stuff out. It was just when you got to that administrative column. It's like, what is this? And, mm -hmm. and that's where I spent a lot of time kind of analyzing it. And then I, once I summarized that all by category, then I just did a pivot table, which then summarized everything and rolled nice compact. And from there, it's where I drew the graphs. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank Jeff you. Jones. With the, um, what's your high-level summary on the, uh, the pass-throughs again? Or is that kind of more to come a little bit? Well, no. Uh, so the pass-through is most of that is that bond anticipation note yeah. you know, that we renew every year. Uh, it's, it's, you know, that was initially really confused me until I sat down with uh, our uh, finance expert to, you know, have the, explain it to me that it's a, um, That's it, the 25 it's, million. Yeah. You know, I think it's like 23 million. And, and this dates back to when Doug Walker was the, uh, mm -hmm. administrator. So it, it's pretty old. Um, and it's, I think there's, mm -hmm. I think it's a 30 year bond, 40, I don't remember 30 or 40 year bond. And it simply gets renewed every year. And, and, and the benefit to us is the is that uh, fixed rate of 3.9. But again, with LIBOR going up and, and, and quickly, um, I, you know, I've, and I just don't know what happens when LIBOR hits 3.9 or, or 4% in that range. I, you know, I, I don't think we all turn the pumpkins or anything or anything goes crashing to a halt. I guess my concern is that um, it's going to change the terms of renewing that yeah. bond in the future. And that, that category called interest in, in um, principal and interest, I'm, I'm afraid, is going to be going up substantially. And yeah. that's, that's what concerns me. And it's already, yeah. like I said, more than we're paying on roads and parks combined. All right. That was uh, the previous <clears throat> Great to look at that um, between the roads, roads and parks combined. So, yeah, and I remember from um, your, our earlier meetings this year, uh, our regular scheduled meetings, though, uh, you're addressing the LIBOR rate and pay attention to that as far as the importance of is it going to continue the strategy of <coughs> refinancing it basically every year or have something locked in. Well, we have to cross oh, bridge when we get to it. Well, I, it's, I think coming it's coming a lot faster than I think you probably ever anticipated uh, uh, seeing it rise to 3.3 already. Yes. So I believe <clears> we're going to renew that bond uh, I think in August and I, there's something on tonight's agenda to, to take care of that. Yeah. Uh, but I would say after August I think all bets are off regarding the future of that bond. I don't know. And thank you. Thanks for the time you put into it.